Good evening. We are coming to you from the Egyptian Church of Kares, Christ Incorporated. This program is for one group of people and one group only, the children of God. We no longer have to wander or wander off the straight path. For those who want to make a difference, for those that want to know the truth to so many unanswered questions, and for those who are tired of the devil taking control over everything in their lives and the lives of their children, this program is set up for those who want to bring God's kingdom to earth. According to the scriptures, Matthew 6.33, But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness should be added to you. Therefore, we must take back control of our lives. We, as the Egyptian Church of Kares Christ Incorporated, are reaching out to embrace all the children of God. As it states in Psalms 82.6, I have said, Ye are gods, and all of ye are the children of the Most High. Next, you will be listening to our pastor, Reverend Dr. Malachi Ziyok L. in question and answer form. Dr. Malachi Sayur, it seems what we're reading in the English King James Version of the Bible and what's actually in the Hebrew is something different. Could you please explain or give more examples to show why it's a difference? Uh, what happens is what most people don't want to accept because most of us who read the Bible, King James Version, don't even know that it comes from a Tinsdale Version. And the man Tinsdale, which is Williams Tinsdale, was nobody other than Shakespeare. They'll try to give them two different birth dates and everything, two different birthplaces and everything to confuse you. But the original Continental Bible, right, that they talk about was written by Tinsdale. Mm -hmm. And he got burnt at a stake for bringing that Bible into English. Mm -hmm. Anybody who tried to translate the Bible into English mm -hmm. back in the medieval times was burnt with their own Bibles. Mm -hmm. And this happened to several people. And the only person that was able to get away with spreading a translation mm -hmm. of English into the Bible was Martin Luther. Mm -hmm. And he was a student of many of those same men who were burnt at a stake. Mm -hmm. So if you ever saw an English version of the Bible, it was alright to have the Bible in Latin, it was alright to have the Bible in um, Hebrew, but it was not alright to bring it into Greek, and it was not alright to bring it into English. Mm -hmm. Because they knew, once it got into English, mm -hmm. that it was going to lose certain Meanings because the English language in itself is a bastard language composed of many different languages. Mm -hmm. So what happens is things get lost mm -hmm. and meanings get lost. And they were dealing with the word of God and they wanted to be right and exact. And this was very sad about that. Mm -hmm. They were calling right and exact Latin mm -hmm. or the Vulgate mm -hmm. by St. Jerome's. Mm -hmm. And that Latin wasn't exact because Latin in itself is not an ancient Semitic language but a bastard language composed of various different languages. You can look into the Spanish, the present day branches of Latin, Spanish, Castilian, uh, Portuguese, you know, and Italian, and you'll find that those things are dialects that vary. So again, names like Dios can change, and deity and deity and deity have changed, and theos and theo and theology, and those meanings all start to get lost. And then gods like Zeus and them can be stuck in. And when the Bible is not identifying with Roman gods or Greek gods, it's not even identifying with Hebrew gods because there were no Hebrew gods. As I explained a million times before, the word Hebrew didn't come about until Genesis chapter 13. And it wasn't dealing with Aramic or Aramaic gods. And it wasn't dealing with Ashuric or Seretic gods. It wasn't dealing with any Semitic gods. Finding out where these gods come from means you have to go back past Genesis chapter 10 to find out where they got their God and their God concept from. And what happens is anybody who became wise enough 
to figure this out, had to meet in secrecy. Mm-hmm. Had to form secret brotherhoods and quiet fraternities mm-hmm. that kept the secrets of the Bible hidden from the public because if you were caught telling the truth about the Bible, they put you to death. It's very similar to today, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. If you have analyzed the Bible mm-hmm. in languages other than English mm-hmm. and you start to see the fallacies of the King James Version of the Bible mm-hmm. and the mistakes and the outright lies and the misuse of the languages and how people's souls are being directed down the wrong path mm-hmm. and then you say, let me explain what the Bible really means. There's a group of demons out there who immediately come up to keep the Bible in a state of confusion mm-hmm. and make it look like they're helpers and they call you a cult. Mm-hmm. And what they also have done is fabricated many Christian cults mm-hmm. and then bashed them and brought it into the public so that when the truth finally came, mm-hmm. people wouldn't want to accept it because they'll say, you see them Nawapians over there? Mm-hmm. They're a cult. Because they want to translate the Bible from the Hebrew language or from the Aramic language or from the Syretic language or from that which predates it, which would be Chaldean, Akkadian, and eventually Sumerian, which is Ugaric. And give you what it really says and tell you where these things came from. And I'm saying that because it gets around to what you're saying. And where the God came from and where the God concept comes from. Right away when you ask a Christian, a Muslim, or a Jew, they'll say they're monotheists. That means they only believe in one God. Mm -hmm. That word monos is like single, Mm -hmm. alone. Mm -hmm. Now, then what they've done is they've grafted in the polytheism Mm -hmm. or what they call henotheism Mm -hmm. from the Greek word again, meaning one God with many. Mm -hmm. Or polytheism, many gods. Mm -hmm. But they do it in such a unique way that they'll call you a cult if you point it out. For instance, if you say, well, if there's only one God who resides in heaven, mm-hmm. then who are the we and the us throughout the Bible? Right. Oh, that's God and, as Genesis would say, his heavenly host. The heavens are finished and the host of them. Genesis 2, what? You follow what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So he said, well, there was beings with God in heaven mm-hmm. called the army of God or the host of God. Mm-hmm. Is that true? And if there's an army or host, what are they composed of? Are they composed of the same substance Mm -hmm. of God? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like all men, like I explained, all children of God Mm -hmm. are composed of the same substances. You can actually take a chemical weight of the human body, Mm -hmm. break it down chemically, and regardless whether you're white, black, Chinese, whatever race you belong to, you will have the same chemical compounds. You'll have, you know, calcium and you'll have sodium and you'll have this. The bottom line of what you are is a bunch of elements. So that is what you're composed of. And you reside in an atmosphere made up of the same thing of what you're composed of. Mm -hmm. These elements, water and the body speaks forth water and you're breathing water. Mm -hmm. You think you're breathing air because you want to convince yourself that you're not a reptilian in any form or fashion. But in actuality, your air is nothing but water, Mm -hmm. oxygen and hydrogen. You follow me? So you actually are still underwater even though you're not under massive water. Right. You follow what I'm saying? But again, your environment is the same thing as your composure. So these heavenly hosts who were in the heavens as Revelation tells you, there was a war in heaven that was cast down and Lucifer wanted to take over the heaven and angels were in the presence of God. Now, what was their composure while in the presence of God? Is the heavenly state the exact same as the physical state? Or is it a spiritual state? You know, because God makes a statement, he blew into man of his spirit. Mm-hmm. He didn't say, I am a spirit. He said, I blew into man of his spirit. But they say, worship God in spirit. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't never come down and say, there is a spiritual state. Because mm-hmm. you can't go by the Greek. Because that's one of the languages the Bible was not supposed to be translated into. Mm-hmm. Because they knew that it would corrupt all the words. Mm -hmm. And the translators, go back and do your study, Tinsdale and them were literally murdered for doing it. Mm -hmm. And the most outstanding was a man called John Wycliffe. And he was of the 14th century, an Oxford scholar, where they get the word wicker. And they declared anybody who followed him, who translated the Bible to English Mm -hmm. and to Greek, that they were witches and warlocks. That's how they got that. That's Mm -hmm. in history also. 
and he translated the Bible from Latin into English. Okay. And because of that, they killed him, put him to death. All right? Mm -hmm. Then, of course, William Tinsdale and then Martin Luther. These men were put to death for that very act. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they were trying to hide what it really says. Mm -hmm. First problem they were having with the Bible is that it was clearly, right, plagiarized mm -hmm. from Babylonian tablets. Clearly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it was the Babylonian tablets. Where did they come from? And it was clear by the deities that they were using, their doctrine came out of Egypt. It was clear by the highest god of the Sumerian tablets called the Enuma Elish. Mm -hmm. That the very name Anu mm -hmm. was an Egyptian name for the city called Heliopolis. And the god of the city of Heliopolis was called On. Mm -hmm. So they had to hide the name On in the Bible mm -hmm. that was easily found in Hebrew. For instance, in the case where we spoke of where Rachel is on her dying bed, Genesis 35, 18, she names her last son what? Ben Ani. Ben Ani. Mm -hmm. And then Jacob comes behind her quickly mm -hmm. and changes it from son of my son God mm -hmm. on the Egyptian deity, mm -hmm. showing that Rachel was worshiping the Egyptian deity mm -hmm. on of the city of Heliopolis of the sun. Where did Heliopolis come in? Heliopolis comes in from the Greeks. And the Greeks got all their studying in Egypt. This ain't no coincidence. This is a fact. They did all their studying, all their research, everything in Egypt. And then brought it back to Greece. And they named a city after the Sphinx. Instead of saying Heliopolis, they said Leopolis. And they took the word Leo for lion. And and put it there. The city of the lion. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about ancient Egypt's sphinx, which you call Ruti in ancient Egypt. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They were bringing as a sign that they had got all their knowledge, all their wisdom, and all their understanding, because they never got an understanding, mm -hmm. from the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. This is what happened in the Bible. And we can keep on finding names throughout the Bible, like the Levitical priest. If you trace Levi, mm -hmm. one of the sons of Jacob down, mm -hmm. and you trace all his sons' names to the Bible, mm -hmm. they're all Egyptian names. Genesis 46. When you 11. go to Joseph, right, the last son of Jacob, mm -hmm. who went into Egypt, as they say, mm -hmm. he had two sons. Mm -hmm. One's called Ephraim, mm -hmm. and the other's called Manasseh. Manasseh. And they set up Egyptian cities. Genesis really, 46, another 20. word for upper and lower Egypt, actually. But they were half Egyptian and half Chaldean because, or Syrian because their father Isaac was a descendant of Abraham who was a Babylonian, a Chaldean, a Sumerian. There was no such thing as half Jewish or half Hebrew. They were half Sumerian from Abraham through Isaac and half Egyptian because they were the sons of Joseph, and they picked Egyptian wives. This can be found in the Bible. Just look it up. So now again, we have the two great cities. And remember, Ephraim is the one who set up the kingdom of Israel. So therefore, the priesthood in the kingdom of Israel they keep talking about were all Egyptian priests. The dress code of the high priest of Israel was the dress code of the priest of the deity Ra. You follow that? And you find the name Ra hidden in there because they had to give a name for Egypt. Mm -hmm. and they didn't want to say Aiptos, mm -hmm. which is the way the Greeks say Aiptos, mm -hmm. because the middle part of it was Copt or Coptic. Mm -hmm. And they'll today call Egyptian Christians Coptics. Mm -hmm. But the word Coptic mm -hmm. means Copt or center. And when they made that statement, Aiptos, they were saying that this was the center of the world. Mm -hmm. The center of the planet. Mm -hmm. While the Europeans mm -hmm. were still under the impression that the planet was flat, mm -hmm. and therefore where they were was the whole world. Mm -hmm. Overstand that point now. Mm -hmm. The fact that they thought where they were was flat, they had to also believe that where they were was the whole world because any direction you went after that you fell off the side. Right. 
But in Egypt, they had the Dendora, the star constellation. They were mapping the stars, and they knew that the planet was not flat. And they knew that there were continents, and they understood continental drift way back then. So the Bible is based on a mentality, when you get into English, that thought the planet was flat. And that's why they thought the flood of Noah covered the whole planet. Because where they were, they thought everybody there was speaking one language. But if you analyze that chapter closely, you'll find out that the gods were speaking another language. They make you think that everybody died in the flood. Genesis But if you look at Genesis chapter 6, you'll find that there was giants in the earth. Genesis 6. Right? Called Nephilians. And then later on, after the flood, because remember, only Noah's family got in the flood. None of these giants got in the ark. But later, the giants pair again in the Bible as the Nakites, as the Philistines. There's a whole bunch of tribes of giants that pop up again. Now, if everybody died in the flood, then how do these giants survive from Genesis chapter 6 as Nephilims and pop up again as Philistines? where David is going against Goliath, who's really a god, right? Mm-hmm. And the uh, Anakites, who they clearly tell you in the Bible, are giants. First so everybody Samuel couldn't have died in the flood. Right. Then they tell you about the ark landing mm-hmm. on the mountains. They don't say mountain one. Mm-hmm. Mountains of Ararat, right? Genesis 8, verse 4. So now we have to find out where did this ark originate? Where was that ark originally built? Mm-hmm. And where were those people at? Mm-hmm. You understand? And what language was the original language of that Bible? And who were those deities? Because they had monotheism, Mm -hmm. polytheism, Mm -hmm. and henotheism. Mm -hmm. Uh, Monotheism meant belief in only one God. Mm -hmm. Henotheism believed that one God created many other gods or many other beings. Mm -hmm. And polytheism just meant the belief in all of these beings. Mm -hmm. The Bible is really not monotheistic. Because angelic beings Mm -hmm. or heavenly hosts was in the presence of God and in the body of God. Meaning in the substance of God. They were what God is composed of if they was in his environment. Mm -hmm. Because nature teaches us that whichever environment you are in, you are predominantly that environment. Mm -hmm. So if the Bible tells us there were beings in the heavens... With God. And that they are transparent, translucent, mm-hmm. exoplasma, spiritual, mm-hmm. any kind of force, force of energy, equal, then God must also be composed of the same thing. So these were, in actuality, miniature gods. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was like a 100-watt bulb mm-hmm. to a 50-watt bulb, mm-hmm. or a 100-watt bulb to a 25-watt bulb, mm-hmm. giving off less light, mm-hmm. but still giving off. Like still composed of the same thing. So they don't want you to get an understanding of what's taking place in the Bible because it will defeat a very powerful economic strategy, a very powerful mind-controlling system. Religion, as taught today, is mind control. It has people hating other people because of beliefs. Because of things that has not even been confirmed. You know why? Because like the organized old churches, the vicars of the medieval time, who was afraid of us Freemasons, who was afraid of people like the man John Wycliffe, who were afraid of people like Tinsdale, who were afraid of people like Martin Luther, you are now back at that same day and time. Where they got a set doctrine with no facts in it. No confirmations. Nothing they can prove. Because their preachers don't know the languages of the scriptures. Haven't traveled the world. Haven't dug deeper than what they got in a translation. And a little commentary at the bottom written by somebody else who didn't know. So therefore, they got to stop the truth from reaching people. And... Us breaking a certain kind of spell that's over our people of ignorance. Mm -hmm. Keeping them blinded by fake belief systems. Mm -hmm. 
my Jesus, my Lord, strong voice and drama, my this and my that, subliminally making you feel a part of being wrong, but giving you the impression that you are right. Makes it okay to be wrong. So when you walk up to an Nawabi and say, well, that's not what it says in the scripture in Hebrew. They say, that's what it says in my Bible. Right. Say, well, your preacher said such and such and such, and he was wrong, but he is my preacher. Yeah, and they justify a spell of ignorance called the spell of Leviathan mm -hmm. in the Bible, that master serpent who got these many heads and many arms. Reaching out, just controlling people's lives. And it's all about money. So what happened is, they change things around from language to language and persecute people like us who try to bring the truth. Let's talk about that, Mizraim. Let's talk about monotheism. Let's talk about polytheism. Let's talk about the Egyptians. Let's look at the very name Egyptian in your Bible. Sometimes they put in Mizraim, and sometimes they put in Egypt. Sometimes they put in Ethiopia, mm -hmm. and sometimes they'll put in Cush. Mm -hmm. They pick and choose when they want to translate it, because if they translated Cush and Ham, you know what they get when they say Ham? Burnt black skin. Mm -hmm. And you know what they get when they get Cush? Burnt black skin. How come both of the names mean the same thing? Mm -hmm. So they'll say, well, Ham just means burnt, mm -hmm. and Cush means black. <laughs> and so you said it was Cush a Negro? They'll say, well, no, well, how come Nimrod's a Negro then? Mm -hmm. And they come out the same seed. Right. Mm -hmm. They'll tell you right up front, Nimrod was a Negro. Mm -hmm. Then he had this master plan mm -hmm. to build this tower and got the God of the Bible mad. Mm -hmm. Genesis 11, see, right 4 away, to 7. The Negroes got the God of the Bible mad. Right. You see the psychological tactics? Yes. Mm -hmm. But if you say to any Freemason, then Nimrod was the first Freemason. Mm -hmm. And he was a Negro, or black as you say, mm -hmm. right? Then y'all should be petitioning us for charters. We shouldn't be petitioning y'all for charters. Right. That's the reality. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that nobody wants to address. Mm -hmm. So let's look at Mitzrayim and see what they did. When you see Egypt, you see the word Mitzrayim. Mm -hmm. The Hebrew letters Yim, as you know now, you should be almost Hebrew scholars from these tapes. Mm -hmm. The Yad Mim means pluralization. Now we have the initial letters, miss. That's strangely enough, the exact same pronunciation as the Arabic or Ashuric used in present day Egypt for Egypt, miss. They say mus. A meme, a sod, and a ra. The ra is an ara. And it's the same now. Let's take the word mus and go miz, then go ra, and then go yim. And you get your word Mitzrayim or Mizraim. Mm -hmm. What they're calling Egypt in the Bible. Go to a Bible dictionary please and look it up. Don't believe me? Check it out. And you see that Ra is right there in the middle of the word. But they'll say it means two ponds, it means two lakes. And then you start another thing. What two ponds or what two lakes or what two rivers? Because if it's over there in Egypt and it's two rivers, it must be the white and the blue now. And the white and the blue now did not and does not to this very day originate in Northeast Africa. It originates down in South Africa with Lake Victoria. How that got there, I don't know. And travels up toward the Mediterranean. So then the rivers that they're talking about and the origin of man would be down there with the bush pygmies. Mm -hmm. called Pathites or Taites. Mm -hmm. And the waters went up the Nile and they followed the Nile up toward Europe. Mm -hmm. And they're finding this out every day. They just found new skull, mm -hmm. 3.5 billion years mm -hmm. old, they'll say million. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's called Kenya Pithesis. Mm -hmm. And it's older than Lucy. Mm -hmm. And almost four months ago, they found one in... Uganda. These happen to be the same places that for years I've been telling you man originated. Uganda and Kenya and South Africa where the gold in that land is good as Genesis chapter 2 verse what? Okay. And then you know what you get when you get to Genesis chapter 2? 
Verse 13, you get a location. You get a locale. But what they did is they put Egypt in there. And the name of the second river is Gihon. The same as that which compresses the whole of Ethiopia. Go to your Bible right now and look up Genesis chapter 2, verse 13. And see if that sentence is there in English. And let me show you what they did to your mind right there. I'm assuming you got your Bible open you just read. And the name of the second river is Gihon. Right? The same is that it would compass the whole of Ethiopia. Now you know where Ethiopia is today. The name of Ethiopia was Aksum, by the way. The biblical name for Ethiopia is Cush. Cush, meaning black folks. Black skinned people. However... They're talking about a river, Gihon. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the words in there. Ethiopia means black or Kush. Mm -hmm. Then you got Gih, which means to bust forth or break outward. Mm -hmm. Or to beam forward. Mm -hmm. And the last part, when you get to the root of Gihon, you get the word Giach. Mm -hmm. But if you look at your Bible, you see that there is a Vav or Wav and a Nun in Hebrew, which is equivalent to the Egyptian god On again, which is the city of Heliopolis, city of the sun. So now this is telling you in writing the Bible where the place is at. But you won't know that. And when you go to all your commentaries, they just say, oh, it means um, busting forth. But nobody knows exactly where it's at. But if you looked at the root of the word that they created, Gehon, you see the word is Geh on. The place where the sun comes forward. The city of the sun, Heliopolis. Right there in the Bible. So that right there in Genesis chapter 2, verse 13, where you see the word Gehon, split it in half, and G I H dash. O -N, and you're back to the same thing that happened with Rachel and Jacob and the birth of her son. Ben-Oni. The priesthood of On. The Egyptian God. Why? Because Moshe, which is the way the Hebrews say Musa, the way the Arabs say Moses, is nothing but an Egyptian name. And Moses, or Mos, meaning child, Lived his whole life in Egypt. Educated amongst the Egyptians. So everything he taught in his Torah or Bible was Egyptian religion. So therefore the God On is going to show up. The God Ra is going to show up. The God Amun is going to show up. The God Niet shows up in the Bible. The God Nun shows up in the Bible. All the gods in the Bible are Egyptian gods and they're in there by name. Why they're so set on you not getting away from their King James Version. Not getting into the Hebrew. You can go to borders and get a Hebrew Bible. And come back to your church with the Hebrew Bible. No, 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 don't read that. Read the version that we need you to read in order to keep you in a spell. Mm -hmm. Keep you under this hypnotic spell. We don't need you to probe deep enough to find out things. Mm -hmm. That they knew and was protected by sacred brotherhoods. Who had to hide and form orders and societies like the Rosicrucians. And, you know, the Theosophical Society. And the Freemasons and the Knights of Columbus and the Alhambra and the Shrine. To hide information. Because they was exposed through Egypt mm -hmm. and traveled or to Morocco, to Maghrib, and found out the truth. And couldn't even come back and tell people. Mm -hmm. Because even Freemasons at one time mm -hmm. were called a cult. Mm -hmm. And they tried to stop Freemasonry. Because they said we had secrets and we were witchcraft and a whole bunch of stuff. Because of the man, John Wycliffe. From where they get the name Wicker. For what they call witchcraft. Mm -hmm. All a strategy to keep people ignorant. Let's not get too far. So when you go to Genesis chapter 2 verse 13. You see right there a river. Mm -hmm. And that river is identified as Gih or Giyach On. Mm -hmm. The right busting forth of the sun. The Egyptian sun god. 
All right? Mm -hmm. Now, but I want to point out is, notice that it's called Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. Why do they put Ethiopia? Because Ethiopia would come from the word Coptic. Look it up. Go to any dictionary, and it would mean this was the center of the world mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. Ethiopia was the center of the world. Mm -hmm. Notice they say, the name of the second river, mm -hmm. and they talk about how this river, Gihon, compresses the whole land of Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. So therefore, Ethiopia had to have been inside the white or blue Nile. Mm -hmm. But that's not how you'll find it geographically on the map. First of all, we have to decide which one is Gihon. Gihon is the blue Nile that runs through Sudan today. What is the ancient name for Sudan? Ham. Mm. Ancient name for Sudan is Ham. And if you think that's something, when you finish looking at Genesis chapter 2 verse 13, where you see the word Gihon comes from the Egyptian word, all you got to do then is go back down to what? Genesis chapter 2 verse 11, and you see the other river, and it's called a Pisan. And if you go into the root of that word, you get pish, to spring forth, spread out or to scatter, and then on again. Or for the sun to spring forth again. This is another river, which is called the White Nile. So you have the Blue Nile and the White Nile right there in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 2 verse 11. And the name of the first river is the Pison. That is it which compresses the whole of Haliva where there is gold. See, mm -hmm. so now they take you to a certain point and tell you something, but the word is pish on. Again, pish means to spread out or to scatter, and on is the Egyptian deity. Mm -hmm. So now you have the white now and the blue now. But let's look at some other places. Let's look at Genesis 41 45 for Heliopolis. You see strength and vigor. Right? Go ahead. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zephnath Panic. And he gave him to wife Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. So Potiphar, an Egyptian, mm -hmm. was the priest of the god On. Mm -hmm. And now we're back at this place, Geh On. Mm -hmm. And Rachel named her son, Benny On. Mm -hmm. On, an Egyptian god, you can go to any dictionary and look it up, mm -hmm. is traveling through the Bible. Mm -hmm. Even Hagar, mm -hmm. Egyptian wife of Abraham, Called on her God, Ra. Genesis 16, 13, is it? Called on Ra as El Roy. Mm -hmm. And the letter Rish in Hebrew symbolizes the beginning, the head, and it goes back again to a Phoenician God called Rahun. Say it. Rahun. 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 And Rahun is where the Muslims got the name Rahman and Rahim that they open everything with with Bismillahir Rahman Nir Rahim grammatically with sun and moon letters they change it so you wouldn't hear Bismillah Al Rahman Al Rahim which would immediately identify back to a Babylonian god and also a god that comes out of Ethiopia by way of Yemen as found in the Quran chapter 17 verse 110. When they tell all Muslims they can either call on him by Allah or they can call on him by Rahman. Mm -hmm. And have a whole chapter El Rahman. Mm -hmm. A deity that comes out of the southern part of Arabia where the statues were found of the deity a lot. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they go back to the name Ra. Which means the head or the leader. Mm -hmm. And thus you get the word Mizrahim. Mm -hmm. And Menis, okay. the prefix of that word, Mizrahim, Menis, is the name. And look it up, M-E-N-E-S. Mm -hmm. Go look it up. Mm -hmm. Is the head or the first dynasty. Mm -hmm. The beginning of the dynasties. Mm -hmm. So they were basically saying Mizrahim. This is the beginning or the head of the dynasty, starting with Menes. Mm -hmm. And it's right in your Bible, hidden in the name Mizraim. Okay. In Hebrew. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They don't want you to know this. They don't want you to know that they worship the same as the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. you know? And they say, no, the Egyptians had faces of beasts. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And they walk around with cow heads. And bull heads and lion heads. And they worship mortals. 
And that is polytheism. That is something we don't do. That is paganism. And then you go, really? Well, if we looked in Revelations and in Daniel, and we find the Ancient of Days sitting in the center of a throne, and they identify him in all their commentaries as Jesus sitting there, and around that throne was 20 and 4 elders. Now this is all Christianity and Judaism because it's in Daniel's as well as in Revelations. And around the throne was 20 and 4 elders. And what else? Four what? Four beasts. Four beasts were there. Daniel and seven, in Bibles when they draw those six. things, they draw up four animals. They show you a cow's head. Name a cow deity. Hathor. Another one, Abbas Bull, the children of Israel went into the wilderness and made a golden cow right away. Where were they coming from? Egypt. Out of Egypt, according to y'all. They didn't get rid of that cow. That cow became one of the beasts that's in the throne of heaven in the book of Revelation chapter 4, verse 6. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne, and round about the throne, were four beasts, full of eyes before and behind. Seven. And the first beast was like a lion, a kir. Name a female lioness in Egypt. Tefnut, another one. Sefmet, another one. Best. They got the lion's head from Egypt. That's the first beast. And the second beast was like a calf, a cow, a bull. Name one, Hathor. Name another one, Aphis bull. You follow what I'm saying? They got that from Egypt. And the third beast had the face of a man. Name a man deity, Osiris. Name another one, King Tut, Unkenuntin. I can name a host of them. They'll say Path, Amun-Ra. All right, which you can see their faces. And they got it from Egypt, the face of God. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle, a bird, mm -hmm. a fowl. Name one. Horus. Rahariati. All these things came from Egypt. They said, and the four beasts had each on them six wings about him. Whenever they show you Egyptian deities, mm -hmm. like Isis, mm -hmm. And then when any go look at any Egyptian museum, you always see them with wings expanded. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Ghost angel called what? Khonsu. Right. Has four wings, two up mm -hmm. and two down, yep. and two faces mm -hmm. of a bird looking in east and west. Mm -hmm. Y'all follow that? Yes. That's also in sacred teachings. Mm -hmm. So that concept of the Egyptians worshiping animal heads... And making them polytheists, this is right in your Bible. So here you're getting taught animal worship mm -hmm. or animal acknowledgement, the same as Egypt. Why is it so much of what you're being taught in your Bible is exactly a match to Egypt? Why is it that you've been told to look at the flood of Noah? And you looked at the flood of Noah and you focused in on the flood of Noah and you said, that was the great flood. Mm -hmm. You didn't do any studies of ancient Egypt and find out about the delude of ancient Egypt. Or you didn't stop to look at Genesis chapter 1 and see the real first flood. Genesis chapter 1 has the real first flood. Let's look at it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. There was nothing, no shapes, no mountains, no trees. The earth was without form and without void. Boho and toho. And toho and boho. Go ahead. And darkness was upon the face of the and deep. And darkness was upon, kosher was upon the face, the phaneme, or phaneme of the deep. Deep what? They'll tell you. Deep, go ahead. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And the ruach, or the wind, which is another Egyptian deity. Right? Another Egyptian, the god of wind, who is it? Shu, <laughs> and when you say Shu, Shu, you see the wind. You see where it comes from. But anyway, Shu moved upon the face of the what? Waters. Go ahead. And God said, let there be light. So the whole planet was already covered under water. And there was no shape. 
and no form. No mountains. No trees. No land. Now if you look at the same Genesis chapter 1 verse 9. Somebody want to read it? Let's find out when the flood subsides. The real flood. The first flood. Which they don't want to teach you about. Because it will take away from the greatness of the flood they're pushing on you. You know it's deep? At the end of this flood, God is going to tell them, be fruitful and multiply. Mm -hmm. And at the end of Noah's flood, mm -hmm. the exact same words are used. So this is also a flood. Go ahead, read 9, someone. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. See? So the world was underwater back then, mm -hmm. and then God made land appear. During Noah's time again, now we're going to move from Genesis chapter 1 all the way to Genesis chapter 6 and 7, and we'll get the same story. But they want to teach you only about one flood, because they don't want to tell you about the original Egyptian flood. And when they tell you about the flood in Noah's time, they actually cheat and tell you that the craft landed on Mount Ararat, but they don't give you enough knowledge about Mount Ararat. That's in Genesis chapter 8 verse 4. And the ark rested, and the word rested there is Noah in Hebrew. The word rested there is Noah. Noah in the Hebrew, but Noah is what you see in your Bible, to rest. Now, how can the man be named after the incident, before the incident? Because Noah's mother and father didn't know there was going to be a flood. Because God spoke to Noah. Mm -hmm. And Noah didn't even know what he was calling him for. Mm -hmm. So you know Lamech and them couldn't have known. Mm -hmm. But he named him Noah. No, that's not true. I'll tell you why he's named Noah. Genesis chapter 5 verse 29. It reads, And he called his name Noah, saying, The same shall comfort us concerning our works and toil, of our hands because of the ground which the Yahweh has cursed. And they named him Nuach to rest. Now Genesis chapter 8 verse 4 then says, And the ark, Nuach, Noah, rested, right, in the seventh month. So now, where did the name Noah really come from then? Because it's describing the event of a boat settling down mm -hmm. on some mountains, not the person who's going to save them, because that name doesn't have anything to do with what they say in Genesis chapter 5, 29. Mm -hmm. It's an Egyptian name. And what's interesting about it is when you find out that in Genesis 9, 21, mm -hmm. that Noah got in trouble because of after the flood, he became drunk mm -hmm. and laid naked in his tent. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? You go to Egyptian Hieroglyphics Dictionary, Volume 1, by E.J. Wallace Budgets, and you can go look it up, page 355, you'll find the Egyptian name, North. Mm -hmm. You know what it means? To be drunk with joy, mm -hmm. or drink and drunkenness. Mm -hmm. and then turn to Genesis 9, 21, mm -hmm. and he drunk of the wine, and was drunken, and he was uncovered in his tent. But the word they use for drunken here in the Hebrew text is shalkar. Mm -hmm. To be illusionary, to be illusionary, to be hazy, mm -hmm. to become drunk or drunken or intoxicated. Mm -hmm. But the name Noah mm -hmm. in your Bible is an Egyptian word mm -hmm. and it means to be drunk with joy. Mm -hmm. And is that not what Genesis 9.20 is saying? Mm -hmm. That after the flood, Noah became a husband man and wanted to celebrate mm -hmm. with joy and became yes. drunk? That's where the name comes from. Look it up. Do your research. Go on the internet and look up the dictionary of Egyptian Hieroglyphic Dictionary, Volume 1, by E. A. Wallace Burgess, page 355, and you'll find the word right there. And then that should give you a different understanding about what they're telling you. The reason why I say that because I spoke earlier about Mount Ararat. Mm -hmm. And they say that the boat landed on Mount Ararat, or the mountains of Ararat, as if that was the tallest mountain in the world. Mm -hmm. When anybody knows the tallest mountain in the world is Mount, mm -hmm. and where is that located? In the Himalayas. In the Himalayas. Nowhere near 
Mount Ararat, which is between the Caspian and the Black Sea, called the Caucasus Mountain, or the Caucasian Mountain. You can look that up. And you'll find out that that mountain is about 5,168, right, mm-hmm. meters, or 16,945 feet high. Mm-hmm. And it's not by far the highest mountain. They calculate in cubits. And if you calculate by cubits, which comes from the Egyptian span, the whole height of the flood only comes out to be 15 cubits, which is 25 feet. Mm-hmm. That makes it 25 cubits above the highest mountain. The water, that is. Would only be 25 cubits above the highest mountain. Genesis chapter 7, verse 19 through 20, clearly tells you that a cubit called an amma is the mother's arm or the forearm. That gives you the length. So if you go back and do some calculations, you begin to see just how high that is or is not. You have 16,945 feet. Plus 25 feet would give you 16,970 feet. That would be the full depth of all the waters mentioned in the Bibles for that flood of Noah's time. And that does not exceed over Mount Everest. Look these things up. But the flood of Genesis, the Egyptian flood, the Nile flood, which is on record also, (laughs) covered every mountain. There was Boho and Toho. Mm. And Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 23. We've been there before. Mm. Go there again. It confirms it for you. There was nothing here. No shapes and no form. So the whole planet was underwater. That was the first flood. Why didn't they teach you that? Mm-hmm. Go to church this Sunday and ask. Tell me about the first flood. Mm. Don't tell me about the second flood. Mm. Tell me about the first flood of Genesis chapter 1. Mm. Teach me about that flood. And when the land came forth, and when life came again. And that's why you have things like the gold was good. That's why you have things like whales inside the Bible. Ezekiel 32, that's why you have things like dragons in the Bible. Isaiah unicorns in the Bible. Numbers 23, things that you don't know anything about that existed in worlds that existed before the creation story of 4,400 years ago that you know about. Your Bible is teaching you about 4,000 400 BCE. Mm-hmm. They're giving you that on. But science and archaeologists and paleontologists mm-hmm. know for a fact that it takes millions of years, millions upon millions of years for gold to Germany. form or germinate beneath the earth. Especially good gold and diamonds mm-hmm. and petroleum mm-hmm. and uranium mm-hmm. and all the different things that are found along the Nile mm-hmm. or get on, get ah on which is the city of Heliopolis in ancient Egypt, Mm. where the Blue Nile and the White Nile is at to this very day, running straight from South Africa on up to Ethiopia, Kenya, Uganda, straight on up into Sudan, straight through Nubia and on up into Egypt, and feeds down into many branches, like it says in the Bible, right into the Mediterranean. And this was all Africa. All those people that lived along that Nile were Negroids. Nobody denies that we're Africans, I hope. Mm-hmm. Oh, when this is made clear, they don't take that. <laughs> that meant all those people who was in the Bible during that period of time were in Africa. Mm-hmm. And we're going to explain to you how the family of Noah mm-hmm. had to have been in Africa first, mm-hmm. why we touched on the flood, why we touched on the mountaintops, mm-hmm. and how that boat had to have lifted up from Africa, mm-hmm. but it lighted down, or Noah rested down on Ararat. Or the Muslims call it Mount Judy, which is also wrong. Mm. Your father, but they had to have moved from Africa first. Here's how. Let's start again before we run out of time. And that is, let's go back to the name Cush, or Ethiopia. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 13, mm-hmm. is where Cush comes up first, along with the Blue Nile and the God Get on the Egyptian deity. So we know this is at the Blue Nile in Africa. Mm-hmm. And Cush or Ethiopia is still there. Mm-hmm. So you ain't going to move it now. Right? Mm-hmm. But we got to go back to Genesis chapter 10 to hear the first time Cush was supposed to be born. Mm-hmm. Could somebody read Genesis chapter 10 verse 6 to me? And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizram, and Put, and Canaan. Now, let's start. And the sons of Ham... 
Now it's telling you who Ham's sons are. But before I go any further, I got to see who Ham is. Guess what? If I go to the Egyptian Encyclopedia Dictionary, Volume 1 of E.A. Wallace Budgets on page 572, I will find the name Ham. Mm -hmm. Blazing, burning hot. On page 787, Ham, Ham, Kemi, which becomes Kemet. And it means to be burnt black or to be black. Again, ham is not a Hebrew word. Ham is an Egyptian word, just like Gion was an Egyptian word. And Ben Ani was an Egyptian word. All of these were people who worshiped the sun god, the light of the heaven and the earth. The light. Of the sun. Because there were no light bulbs back then. Before Tesla and before Edison, there were no light bulbs. So whenever the Bible or the Quran or any holy scripture makes reference to light, it's talking about candlelight. It's talking about fire or it's talking about the sun's light that they use by day, but fire light to light the caves or the tents or the huts to warm them by night. Mm -hmm. Remember, one light back then. So when the Quran says that Allah is the Nord of Samawati wal Arda, and that was over 1400 years ago before Tesla and before Edison, they're saying Allah is the light, the Nord, or Nord and Nav is basically the same. One is light, one is fire. That's the same word, Nard. Right? And that is an Egyptian name also. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now, if Ham, which is an Egyptian name, mm -hmm. was a father of Cush, that would explain why Cush as Ethiopia would be on the blue Nile. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Why? Why else? Because these were all what? People who lived along the Nile. Right. Neolithic. Right. And they didn't become dynastic until Mizraim. Then you get your dynastic periods because Miss Rahim is telling you that now we have a new seed who had mixed their seed with other people. Mm -hmm. So by the time Miss Rahim and them come back into Egypt, and when they say come back in Egypt, when did they leave? They left in the flood. <laughs> no. The boat lifted up from Ethiopia mm. on their ham, which is Sudan, mm. right, and landed over there in the Caucasus Mountains. And there they mixed in with people as they migrated back home. And all of them didn't come back home. Mm. Because some of the Negroes stayed there. Really? Yes. And they had over there with them Egyptian technology. Egyptian masonry. Yeah. Egyptian architectural knowledge. Yeah. One of those Negroes, we will read about a little further. What is his name? Nimrod, the son of who? See, read it again. It says what? And Ham begot Cush. And who did Cush beget? Nimrod, a mighty hunter, a gibbon before the Lord. And he went and built the city, but the God of those people over there, where he was at, that God Adonai, or that God Yahweh over there, didn't like what Nimrod was doing. Because Nimrod had the ability to build a city to heaven. If they didn't have the ability to build a city to heaven, there would be nothing to fear. They would not have had to tear the city down. But Nimrod was one of the family of Ham and Cush, which I've just proven to you were Egyptian names who lived along the Nile. And so why was Nimrod still over there? Why wasn't he back in Africa? Why don't you find Nimrod's name listed in your Bible dictionaries as being in Africa? Mm -hmm. But they'll tell you he's a Negro ask any Jehovah's Witness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's in their books. You follow? And now let's ask about another one. Jephthah. What about Jephthah? How come Jephthah is not listed in Africa? If you go right now, they can tell they say, well, Cush of the Bible is Ethiopia. Ham of the Bible is Sudan. Foot of the Bible is Libya. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And Mizraim of the Bible is Egypt. Mm -hmm. Say, what about Jephthah? Uh, Who's Jephthah? You know, Shem, Ham, and Shepherd. What about Shem? How does Shem stay over there and become Semitic? And you say they mixed in together, with Shem mixed in with Canaan. So Shem stayed over there mixed in with the Canaanites. Something that was forbidden. And Jephthah married Iris, a Hittite, and got the son Adonius, which is another word for Greece, for Edonim, Edom, Red Race. 
That's in the Bible. But they didn't come back over with them. They stayed on that side. So what happened is, the first flood in Egypt, the real one, lifted up. And the menjet of the great god Ra, the, they call it a menjet, a big boat. In ancient Egypt, it's all written over the doctrine. Here's what they say. They say that Ra was born out of what? Out of Nun. And you'll find Nun in your Bible. The name Nun, N-U-N. Look it up. 119 and 105 of Psalms, you'll find the name of the deity, the Egyptian god. And what is that? The primordial waters of darkness. And then Ra, a mountain, rose out that water and Ra was on it. Now, what is Ra in Egypt? The sun. The sun god. Mm -hmm. So you cannot have a sun coming over a mountain if there's no mountain. Mm -hmm. it's true, it's true. So when they make the statement that Ra came over the mountain, when the mountain came out of the water, they're talking about in Genesis chapter 1 verse 9, when the water subsided and the land came forth and you can see the sun come over the mountain in the east, then you got your pyramid with your eye on the back of your dollar bill. Mm -hmm. Talking about the original creation in Egypt. Why is there an Egyptian pyramid with an eye over it on the back of a dollar bill here in America? Yeah. Mm -hmm. True. Why ain't the Vatican over there? Right. Or a temple in Jerusalem? Right. Or the place where the Lord was buried? Why, why is it Egyptian there with an eye? Because that eye is the eye of Ra coming over. And it's also Nimrod's eye mm -hmm. in certain societies. Mm -hmm. Because he was over there causing mischief in the land, would you call it. Mm -hmm. To the point where the gods and those people were mad at him. And they said, right in the Bible, let us go down there. Mm -hmm. Not let me. It wasn't yeah. one God mm -hmm. in the land of Babel. That's right. It was a group of gods. That said, let us go down there and what? Confuse their tongues. Genesis their God went down to confuse people. Not to guide people. He didn't have the power to stop Nimrod without coming down there. He couldn't stop him from up there, wherever up there is. Right. Right. Him and a group of guys had to come down here. And that was Yahweh, and that was your Adonai. That was different than the God on, and that was definitely different than the God that Nimrod worshipped. But the God that Nimrod worshipped gave him the power to build a tower that could reach to the God that they worshipped. And the Egyptians still build those towers. They're called Tachino. They're called Ablises, or Benbens. They still have them all over Egypt. In fact, Europeans have come to Egypt and have taken them and put them as a symbol in every city. Right down here in Athens, right downtown on Broad Street, there's an obelisk before the cathedral representation. France got one. New York got one. Houston, Memphis, Tennessee got one. Washington got a tremendous one. They're all over the world, even in India. People have been still in that concept of that tower that they built. You with me? Mm -hmm. So Genesis chapter 10 clearly points out Ham, this Egyptian name, fathered Cush, and Cush fathered a Negro. And that Negro called Nimrod, or Sargon, stayed over there. And Jephthah stayed over there. And Shem stayed over there. But the other sons went home to Egypt. And that's why Mithraim ends up back being called Egypt. Or the Cairo or Cahira area. And then you'll find that Ham becomes Sudan. Nishidi. And then you find that Cush becomes Ethiopia. You follow that? They had a flood. They lifted up in a menjit, an Egyptian boat. The only people back then building boats. And that boat saved a certain family of people along the Nile. And they landed over there in Mount Ararat on some mountains. You follow that? They don't have no arc. They don't have no facts. They just give you the story. But the Bible says it. And then some of those people started a long journey back home to Egypt. That's how it happens in the Bible. And while over there, they picked up some of the cultures of the Sumerians. Who was over there who had their own visitation from the stars called the Anunnaki. Who are also ancient Egyptians. So when they came back into Egypt, they moved away, pre-dynastic and Neolithic, people who lived along the Nile, the dark-skinned pygmies called Tides, mm -hmm. which is another name for Ra. Mm -hmm. Their physical manifestation of Ra was Ta mm -hmm. on earth. Mm -hmm. And they moved these people out the way, took it, changed it to their story, and wrote their Bible, 
And if you say anything against it or prove it wrong, you become a cult. You become crazy. Mm -hmm. The same thing that happened through the Reformation period is taking place again. Now with computers and people now learning Hebrew because you couldn't learn Hebrew in America one time. Mm -hmm. Now that you can learn Hebrew and you can learn Semitic, you can learn hieroglyphics, you can learn cuneiform, you take some time, you can see through all this crap. Mm -hmm. Now they'll make you the monster. Because you want to go, I want to go back past Tinsdale and all of these Caucasians that took it upon themselves to take my Egyptian scriptures and translate them and create a religion for themselves and then exclude me from it. Mm -hmm. this is true. Steal my names, my deities, mm -hmm. my images, my temples, and put a seal on the back of the dollar bill and let anybody know, yeah, this is where we took it from, and I can't say nothing. Mm -hmm. Took my sacred knowledge and formed sacred societies and then make blacks petition to join it. Mm -hmm. And they willfully do it. Don't tell them I'm the Moor. I'm the original Moors. Don't tell them that. Don't tell them that they're the original Egyptians, the Kemites, Tamarians. Don't tell them these things. They'll never find this out. Make them think they just was a bunch of Africans jumping around Africa next to going boogaloo, 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 boogaloo. Keep pushing Tarzan movies at them mm -hmm. and Ungawas and stuff. And they'll never see it. Keep them all shaking their heads and wanting to be hip hoppers. And don't let them find out the truth of how great they are. Because it's going to wake up a dormant power in them. Mm -hmm. A sun is going to come on. Mm -hmm. A power of on and raw is going to come out of them. And they're going to start doing great things again like Nimrod. Mm -hmm. And they're going to get us angry. So over there in Putnam County, what happened is a bunch of people got very angry. Because they saw the works of Nimrod, which intimidated their God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Because some people over there called the Wapians, a branch of us, started building pyramids and obelisks and black faced sphinx. And they looked at it and said, What silliness is this way out in the middle of Putnam County? And then they saw 15,000 people show up one year. And they went out there the next year and counted. And 30 some odd thousand people. Where was it printed at? It was printed right here in. Athens newspaper. Mm -hmm. 30,000 people showed up in that village. They never had that many people for none of their hootenanny parties. Mm -hmm. 30,000 people. What race of people? All races. Mm -hmm. You know what shocked them? They were pulling over cars and people had British accents, mm -hmm. German accents, Dutch accents. There was blonde hair, blue eyed. There was Orientals, Koreans. Mm -hmm. There was Chinese. There was Philippines. There was Africans. All coming to the Holy Land. Mm -hmm. They wanted to see the works of the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. Because Egyptians are downplayed in the Bible. Mm -hmm. If you're reading it in English. Mm -hmm. But if you do it like this. You'll see that the Egyptians were with God in the beginning. Mm -hmm. The Egyptians are that Elohim. That Moses was taught by the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. That Joshua was taught by the Egyptians. That Jesus was taught by the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. Now Hosea was taught by the Egyptians. And another little thing. Mm -hmm. The temple that Solomon was supposed to have built. Mm -hmm. Was done for an Egyptian wife. Mm -hmm. And the priests that ran that temple were Egyptians. Mm -hmm. And that's why when you look at the shrine of symbol today. You see the Egyptian face on it. Mm -hmm. Though they don't know nothing about it. That Egyptian face is the mark that that original temple of Solomon, the architecture of it, is no more than a replica of the temple of Hathor. Mm -hmm. The Kaaba in Mecca mm -hmm. that the Muslims are all circling and praying is no more than a replica of the temple of Hathor for Isis. Mm -hmm. Because that's not Islamic architecture. Mm -hmm. And that's not Jewish architecture. Mm -hmm. These are square cube buildings. Mm -hmm. That's Egyptian architecture. To this very day. The churches and the cathedrals, when you look at the church, you see this long steeple sticking up, that's an obelisk needle. They just put a cross on the top of it. That's an obelisk needle. Go back and step back and look at your church again and say, where did that architecture come from? Tell them all the churches, all the mosques, and all of the lodges and temples originally should be built in the east, facing eastward. Because the sun comes out of the East unto the west, according to the Bible. Mm -hmm. That is sun worship. Mm -hmm. And we gather on Sunday. Mm -hmm. S-U-N-D-A-Y. Mm -hmm. Not S-O-N. D-A-Y. Mm -hmm. And I've been through here four or five times to tell you how all over Sunday it is. Mm -hmm. 
Because without the Son, you won't have no church. You won't have no preacher. You won't have no Bible without the Son. So you could act like that sun is not important. But the day that sun stops shining forth its light, that's the day everybody on this planet dies. So you better turn around and respect that sun and stop killing that ozone layer. Because when them rays of the sun, see that ray, the Egyptian way of saying rock, come through there, y'all can forget it. And I'm telling you, the devil and his seed is doing everything in his power to keep you ignorant to these facts. They'll do everything in their power to try to stop the Nwapians or anybody else. They try to teach the truth. Mm-hmm. They'll call you a cult. And they'll mm-hmm. slander you. And they'll create stories. And they'll scheme. And they'll connive. And they'll plot. Mm-hmm. The same way Herod was plotting on Jesus. Matthew 2 verse 8. But God knew where Jesus should go. Mm-hmm. So that Jesus would come back to Jerusalem with the truth to save his people. Right. So God sent Jesus to Egypt. Matthew 2 13. And when Jesus came back, he was arguing with them in the temple. Yes. God made the next most powerful man in all of the Bible, mm-hmm. Moses. Born, raised, and educated in Egypt. He wrote your Bible. Exodus chapter 2. He also made sure that the patriarch of all Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, namely Abraham, he made sure he journeyed and was taught in Egypt. And he also made sure his son Isaac made his way to Egypt. And he knew that Joseph would have an effect on all the tribes of Israel. So he made him into the courts of Egypt raised in Egypt and educated in Egypt and gave all of them Egyptian wives. Mm-hmm. Only one of them that I mentioned that didn't have an Egyptian wife was Jesus. Mm-hmm. Abraham had an Egyptian wife. Mm-hmm. Genesis 16. Right? Yes. Now Rachel worshipped an Egyptian god. Genesis 35, 18. So Jacob had an Egyptian wife. Right. Joseph. Egyptian Moses. Egyptian Genesis 41. You know what I'm saying? Exodus all of them he gave Egyptian wives. So that they can teach them the ways of Egypt. Right. And they in turn teach you in your Bible. Mm-hmm. That's why it's called your Holy Bible. The word holy is Heliopolis or Holly for sun. Mm-hmm. And Bible is from papyrus. Mm-hmm. Look it up. Biblios mm-hmm. or Egyptian papyrus. Little scroll. Oh. This is an Egyptian book. When you open it mm-hmm. and you turn to Genesis chapter 1. When you take the Hebrew away, which is Barashi, they give you Genesis. Mm. G-E-N space Isis. Right. Mm. That's true. G-E-N genealogy mm-hmm. Isis. Right. You want to find the genealogy of Isis? All you have to do is go right to Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. This is the genealogy or generations of the heavens mm-hmm. and of the earth. When they were created in the day that the Yahweh Elohim made the earth in the heavens. Mm-hmm. Now let me tell you something about that. Mm-hmm. The reason why I point that out mm-hmm. is because if Genesis chapter 1 verse 9 mm-hmm. says that the earth came up from under the water. Mm-hmm. Then it was already made. Mm-hmm. Under the water. Mm-hmm. Here it's talking about pre that time. Because mm-hmm. it's telling you that the earth was made. Mm-hmm. So therefore, the form of void and darkness was because of anybody looking at the surface of the water can't see the structure. They can't see the sea creatures. Mm -hmm. Because you got a whale in here. Mm -hmm. A great whale, they speak of. Mm -hmm. And whales have hips. Mm -hmm. Do some research. Which meant before they was in water as mammals, they still got to come up to breathe. Because if they don't, they'll drown. Mm -hmm. So the whale was once on land. But in your Bible, Genesis 1.21, they give him identification as a sea creature. Mm-hmm. And God created great whales. Mm. Right? And every living creature that what? Mm-hmm. Moveth in the waters. Go ahead. Right forth abundantly after their kind. So there was putting a whale mm-hmm. in the water. Right. Anybody knows who studies oceanography, go look it up. Mm-hmm. That whales are mammals. Land creatures. Mm-hmm. Whales have fur. Mm-hmm. Whales give birth like any other land creature and they have hips. Mm-hmm. Which means that whales once walked mm-hmm. on the earth with the dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. Don't act like your 4,000 year old Bible is it. No, your 4,000 year old Bible is starting from the story of Canaan in here. Mm-hmm. He was 4,000. That was after Noah's time. Mm-hmm. That's where your Bible, Canaan is your Adam and alligators. Are older than 4,000 years old. Name some more things. Turtles. Hippopotamus. 
hippopotamus. Now they found a mammoth. Scientists have a mammoth elephant. Showing that your story of the elephant is now predated by a mammoth elephant fur that goes back thousands and thousands and thousands of years. How are you going to correct all these scientific discoveries? How are you going to correct your lies? Do you really want the truth or do you want to live a lie? Science is revealing truth. Life came from Mars to this planet. They found rocks with life and they went and took pictures of Mars and they found craters and they found water deposit. They see bacteria. Life was on Mars. It's not in your Bible, but it's in Egyptian writings. It's in Sumerian writings, but not in your Bible. So which came from which? We'll continue this next week. Amen. Amen.